Hello, welcome to lesson four of drainage venting. My name is Plumber Tom, and in this video, we are going to explore circuit vents. We've talked about a series of different types of venting, including the simple individual vent, the common vent. We looked extensively into wet venting, both vertical and horizontal wet venting. But in order for you to understand the full range of venting possibilities, you cannot overlook this very important method of venting, which is called the circuit vent. In this video, we're going to look at what that is, the main principles that govern that from both the International Plumbing Code and the Uniform Plumbing Code. And we'll look at how this can be applied to all kinds of drainage vent situations that you may be in. This is another very important venting method tool that you can put in your tool bag as you go out and create drainage and venting systems. Now, as we continue to examine venting principles, please keep in mind the basic fact. Drains need airflow in order for the waste in the drains to flow properly. The circuit vent operates the same as the wet vents because a portion of the drainage piping will be used both for a drain and a vent. The difference with the circuit vent is that it uses a dry vent to provide airflow. In this illustration, we have two traps that are being serviced by one vent. This is a dry vent. In previous venting lessons, we look at this as a common vent. Two traps, one vent, same floor level. But a circuit vent is similar to this other than we can extend that further downstream and the drain pipe is being used both as a drain and a vent starting at the dry vent and following downstream. Let's have a look at the basic principles governing the installation of circuit vents. These principles come from both the International Plumbing Code and the Uniform Plumbing Code. Circuit Vent Principle 1. No more than eight fixtures connecting to a horizontal branch are permitted to be circuit vented. Now think about this for a minute. That really provides a lot of latitude. You can have up to eight fixtures connected to this horizontal branch and they're being served by a single circuit vent. Circuit vent principle two. Each fixture drain shall connect horizontally to the horizontal branch being circuit vented. Please note this is horizontal connections to a horizontal pipe. Circuit vent principle three. The horizontal drain pipe is considered both a drain and a vent from the circuit vent downstream to the last fixture connection in the circuit. This is a lot like wet venting, where we're using the drain for both a drain and a vent. Circuit vent principle four. The circuit vent connection to dry vent must be between the two most upstream fixture drain connections. From there, it provides airflow downstream to all of the other horizontal drain connections in that circuit. Circuit vent principle five. The circuit vent pipe must be a dry vent and is not allowed to receive discharge from any fixtures. This is what really sets it apart from the wet vent because the vent must be dry. Circuit vent principle six. Circuit vents are allowed to be connected together. Every eight fixtures is considered a circuit and they can continue in one line with multiple circuit vents. Circuit vent principle seven. Fixtures other than the circuit vented fixtures are allowed to connect to the circuit provided that they are either individual or common vented. This is also different from wet venting, which is very exclusive to bathroom group fixtures. The circuit vent opens this up. You can have a circuit with a dry vent in that circuit and other fixtures that are being vented connecting to and running through the circuit. This creates a lot of flexibility. Now all of these principles that we have examined for circuit vents apply to both the International Plumbing Code and the Uniform Plumbing Code. There is one exception that is different with the Uniform Plumbing Code, which we should note here. It says 
that back outlet and wall hung toilets may be circuit vented as long as no floor outlet fixtures are connected to that horizontal branch. This makes sense in the fact that these fixtures, back outlet or wall hung toilets, will be higher in elevation than any of the fixtures that are connected below in the floor. This point from the Uniform Plumbing Code emphasizes the fact that the connections to the circuit vent must be on the same horizontal plane, altogether connecting horizontally. Now, there is another condition that you need to be aware of if you're using circuit vents. Any circuit vent that connects to a stack, which is receiving waste from a branch interval above that floor level, must be provided with a relief vent. This is for both international and uniform plumbing codes. Here are a few principles that will help you understand the relief vent. Relief vent principle one. The relief vent is required when a horizontal branch with four or more toilets connects to a stack receiving waste from an upper floor level. Relief vent principle two. The relief vent is to be installed at or below the most downstream fixture in the circuit. That would mean it connects just before that horizontal branch connects to the stack. Relief vent principle three. The relief vent is allowed to be a fixture drain vent with a maximum of four drainage fixture units. Now, we emphasized earlier the fact that the circuit vent must be a dry vent. But in this case, the relief vent on the downstream side from the circuit can be a wet vent. It could be a sink, a drinking fountain, or anything else, as long as it doesn't exceed four drainage fixture units. Let's examine some code requirements for circuit vents in regard to the slope and the sizing of the pipe. Both the International and Uniform Plumbing Codes state that the slope for a circuit vent shall be no more than 1 inch per foot or 8.3% grade. Let me point out, that is pretty steep slope. We're usually at quarter inch per foot or less. But in this case, it says no more than one inch per foot. So a circuit vent can actually have a steeper slope. Although I don't see why you would need to do that. <laughs> when it comes to the sizing of a circuit vent, both the international and uniform plumbing codes state that the size must be for the total drainage fixture units connected to the circuit. This is basic drainage sizing from chapter seven in either code book as we look at sizing the circuit drain. Now, there is one other important note from the Uniform Plumbing Code regarding the sizing of a circuit vent. It states that the circuit vent must be a minimum of two inch pipe. So two inch is the smallest size you can go for a circuit vent on Uniform Plumbing Code. That is a little different than the minimum requirement from International Plumbing Code, which states that a vent must be at least half the diameter of the drain that it is serving. If you've created a circuit in International Plumbing Code that is three inch in diameter, you could have a one and a half inch circuit vent. All right, that does it for this explanation video on circuit vents. Did you follow? If you have any questions, feel free to go back and rewatch this video as with any of these drainage vent lesson videos. Make sure that you understand how this works. These venting methods can be very useful. Put this in your tool bag of how to do drainage vents and use it as you find application for it. Now, I recently had a video viewer comment that he felt the only way that drains should be vented is to individually vent everything. And you know, there's people out there with that opinion, they're entitled to that opinion. But what I'm saying is that these venting methods that are in both the International Plumbing Code and the Uniform Plumbing Code work. They work. They've been tested and if you do them right, and that's the key, you have to know what you're doing. But if you do them right, then you won't have problems. So make sure you understand. Make sure to check out the next video, which is a continuation of this lesson on circuit vents. I will show you some examples of circuit vents in that video, and I'll see you next time.